ride, show up in my ride, roll out the red carpet, number five, the park, ballet, piece of change, start to be my jam, hit the club, show a look, tip the dancer, do. Yo, what is good? It's that boy Gibbs, back with another one. And today we are talking UFC fight night, St. Louis, right? Nascimento versus Derek Lewis. And um, <laughs> this is actually going to be a good card, a card that I'm attending, and I'm actually pretty excited. Um, you actually got a lot of easy spots, one could say. You know, none of this is easy. You know, you still got to do the work. But um, a lot of spots that are sticking out. So with no further ado, we'll go ahead and get to them. But before we do, we're going to take a look at UFC 301 and get a recap of that. So let me go ahead and share my screen with y'all. All right, there it is. Let me go ahead and slide to the bottom. And then um, we're going to go ahead and recap this card, a card where we went 7-6. to six. Not a good, not the best result, but it was a good betting week if we're just talking strictly bets because you don't bet every fight. So, um, yeah, with no further ado, let's start from the bottom. Where we had Alessandro Costa, you know, get leg kicks on Kevin Borjas and knock him out. That was good. Um, 0 and 1. I had Vince Michelle. 0 and 2. Diana Barbosa. I had her. She did good. She did gas out, though. Um, 1 and 2. Um, I had Jamie Malarkey. 1 and 3. Jakar Close. 2 and 3. Mitabek Orbai. 3 and 3. Luciano Lucindo. 4 and 3. I did have Jack Shore. That's 4 and 4. I did have Paul Craig. That's 4 and 5. I did have Michelle Pajeda. That's 5 and 5. I did have Vitor Petrino. That's 5 and 6. I did have Jose Otto. That's 5 and 7. And then Pan, uh, Steve Ursig, that is five and eight. So technically, I went five and eight, man. Um, not the best card, but um, hey, man, a lot of favorites won. I think only one underdog won. So I take a lot of dog shots, you know. So with no further ado, I'm going to slide over to this week's card where we're, we're, we definitely plan on bouncing back in Derek Lewis versus Nascimento. So with no further ado, let's slide to the first fight of the night in which we have J.J. Aldridge versus Veronica Hardy. And if we're going to go ahead and look at the odds, the opening odds were um, J.J. Aldridge plus 124, Veronica Hardy minus 158. Now the odds have now switched over to J.J. Aldridge being a plus 118 to um, Veronica Hardy's plus uh, minus 146. J.J. Aldridge is a three and four as a dog. Veronica Hardy's one and one as a favorite. So you got Veronica Hardy, man. She's one could say she's on a resurgence, man. She had the nice little win over Juliana Miller, and then she beat Jamie Lynn Horth in the split decision. But one thing I do see here is that it was a split decision win. And um, anybody who knows Gibbs knows that I like to fade split decision wins on your next win. So on your next fight. So. I just think that J.J. Aldridge is going to be the better boxer. She's going to have better, I wouldn't say the better movement, but I would say probably a better cardio, better grit, um, better takedown defense. Um, I just feel like there's a world where uh, J.J. Aldridge is just doing what she wants to, to Veronica Hardy. Veronica Hardy's always been one of the smaller um, flyweights. So um, I definitely just think there's a world where Veronica Hardy is just getting her ass beat. And um, she just can't outpoint it. Um, and that's just how I'm feeling. So first fight of the night, I'm thinking J.J. Aldridge by decision. Next up, we got Jared Gooden versus Kevin Jusset. And we're going to go to the teletape. We got Kevin Jusset, 31 years old. Jared Gooden, 30 years old. 6'2 for Jusset, 6' foot for Jared Gooden. Um, two and a half, two inch reach advantage for Gooden. And a two inch reach um, disadvantage for Kevin Jusset at 75. You got a guy, Kevin Jusset, man. He's super methodical in whatever he does, and um, he's really just trying to, you know, wear you out. Um, Jared Gooden, a guy who has bombs in his hands, um, who's making his second stint in the UFC. Um, a guy in Jared Gooden, I won a lot of money on, man. Um, my first big hit ever came on a Jared Gooden lineup with Jared Gooden in, in a lineup who knocked out Nick Stolce. Um, So I was happy about that. Um, so one could say I have a lot of respect for Jared Gooden, but um, when they step in the octagon, I don't I don't think about that anymore. <clears throat> Jared Gooden did have a good little win versus um, Wellington Terman in his last one, where he cracked and tapped him. I thought that was pretty good. Um, Kevin Jusset had a nice little win over um, Keenan Son, Son Kanan, however you want to say it. He looked good. So I just think that there's a world where Kevin Jusset 
is just beating this man, Jared Gooden, up. And um, I just think that Jared Gooden is probably just going to be a step behind. Um, his path to victory is knockout. And Kevin, you said, he's never been officially knocked out. He did have a um, he did have a no con. Well, um, it was an injury. He had an injury versus Jack Della where he had a cut and they had to stop it due to a doctor's advice. So Kevin Jusset's chin has held up. I'm going Kevin Jusset by decision, but there's a world where Jared Gooden does knock him out. Next up, we got a fight that I'm super excited in, in Jake Hadley versus Charles Johnson. And these guys, man, this has been the Instagram uh, war battle, man. These guys have been going at it. Um, these guys don't like each other. And um, I think that um, whenever they get in there, you'll be able to tell they don't like each other. Um, you got Jake Hadley, 27, Charles Johnson, 33, 5'9 for Charles Johnson, 5'7 for uh, Jake Hadley, and they both have a 70-inch reach. Um, I think that this is a fight where Jake Hadley is going to be a step behind in the boxing, and I think Charles Johnson, a guy who's shown good output, a guy who doesn't isn't, isn't allowed to fight his fight, and you got you you're getting Charles Johnson at um what is it at plus um at plus one thirty six like come on now that is a that's a pretty damn good line um I like Charles Johnson in this spot um I just think that all these guys have been trying to grapple him and now that he's fighting a guy that's not trying to grapple him I just feel like he he's just gonna be winning because you know I feel like he beat Ode Osborne and that was the only guy that actually stood and banged with him and I actually thought that uh. You know, he won that fight. So I don't know. I'm actually going to go, like I said, with Charles Johnson by decision. And I like that. I like that spot for Charles Johnson. Next up, we got Trey Waters versus Billy Golf. And um, this fight's going to be pretty damn good. You got a fighter in uh, Trey Waters, 29. Billy Golf, 25. 6'5 five, five for Trey Waters. Billy Golf, 5'10. Um, in um in a four and a half inch reach advantage for Billy Goff is seventy seven to seventy two and a half. <clears throat> I like I like Trey Waters here, man. I think Trey Waters was a guy who was slept on coming into the UFC, going versus uh, versus Josh Quinlan, and I thought that um, Waters was just doing a good job, doing what he had to do. Um, he wasn't scared of Quinlan, and I felt like you know, um, whenever he's not getting his chin tested or even attempted to get tested. You know, he's winning fights. Trey Waters is going to be the – he's going to be towering over this guy, man. Billy Goff is a baby, basically, to this guy. Um, and he's a small guy for 170 pounds. Like, we're going to keep it a buck. Um, I feel like uh, versus Kenoshita, I feel like Kenoshita was looking good until he got tired. I think this guy, Billy Goff, is super hittable. I think that he trusts on his uh, durability a little bit too much. And I feel like this guy – can be cracked and put out. I'm not predicting it to be this fight, but I am predicting him to be knocked the fuck out one day because, you know, like I said, this dude eats fucking punches with his face. And I don't I don't bet on fighters who eat punches with their fucking face. Um yeah. Go ahead and give me Trey Waters here. I like Trey Waters. Actually decent pretty pretty decently here. I actually like Trey Waters. I think Trey uh, Trey Waters is a parlay piece this week, y'all. Next up, we got Tabitha Ricci. Going versus Tisha Torres, and it's going to be a pretty good fight because you got Tisha Torres who had a baby and she's coming back now, making a big her big uh, return from like I think like a year and a half layoff. Um, yeah, man, um, she hasn't fought in um since uh April of 2022. Excuse me, had a little yawn there. <clears throat> um, she went split decision with Mackenzie Dern in a fight that I thought she won. I thought that Mackenzie Dern lost that fight. And I guarantee she lost her next fight after that because, you know, when you lose a split decision, the, the level of competition gets harder. So um, Tisha Torres, that's when she lost to Nan Shao Nan. You know, when you lose a split decision, it's going to get harder for you, and you're going to lose your next fight. Um, I think Tabitha Ricci, man, she's super live in this spot, man, because, um, you know, although historically Tabitha Ricci has not been the best takedown artist, I think Tisha Torres, historically, she's been a good takedown defender. So I think that this fight is very interesting. But I think that there's a world where Tabitha Ricci is getting her takedowns, and she's just a more crispier fighter, and she's the more active fighter. I don't know if that makes makes sense. I just think that Tabitha Ricci is going to be hungry here, and um, you know, she's just going to be doing her thing. A girl, Tisha Torres, has never been finished, so. 
she, uh, Richie's only been finished one time in her career, and that was versus uh, Menon Fioro. Um, so I was like, okay. She did get uh, knocked out in that one. But um, I definitely have Tabitha Richie by decision. Next up, we have T-Rex Terrence McKinney versus Esteban Ribovic. And um, I'm going to make this one quick. Because this one's pretty non non bi this Prince one's pretty binary. It's either Terrence McKinney in the first round or it's Esteban Rubivic in one or two. There is no third round in this fight. It's Terrence McKinney one by submission or TKO, or it's Esteban Rubivic by one or two. And I'm going Terrence McKinney by one. I don't think Esteban Rubivic survived in this. And that's it for me. That's it for me for that fight, y'all. Chase Hooper versus Vizaslav Borisov. And this is going to be a damn good fight. You got Vizaslav Slavoklos going, coming in at 32 years old. You got Chase Hooper, 24 years old. It's like this dude doesn't age. Um, Chase Hooper, 74-inch reach, 69-inch reach advantage, for 69-inch uh, disadvantage for the reach um, for uh, Borisov. Excuse me. Um, um, you got Chase Hooper, 6'1", Vyacheslav, 5'11". Um, Chase Hooper is going to be the bigger man by a landslide. And um, I think that's going to pay dividends here because you got a guy in Chase Hooper who doesn't back down to nobody. He did get knocked out and, and put out by Steve Garcia. But, you know, hey, we won't hold that against him. He did lose to Steven Peterson, and he did lose to Alex Caceres. What do all those guys have in common? They're all strikers. Um, and we have another striker in Vizaslav. And um, this dude's good, man. I, I think his biggest um, weakness is his takedown defense. And that is going to play in the style of Chase Hooper. Because um, you, you got Chase Hooper, a guy who showed that he has better hands. Um, um, well, improving hands um, when he fought uh, Nick Fiore. So, um, I just think he's improving. You got a guy in Chase Hooper who's 24 years old and has a lot of room for improvement versus Vyacheslav. This guy is basically who he is. This is who we – what you see in Slava Claus is what you're going to get. He's not going to be getting any better in what he does. Um, in my opinion – Borisov, Borisov has to win this fight because of, of the, traje the trajectory of Chase Hooper to Vyacheslav, you know, 32 to 24. I, th I think Slava has to get this fight done if he ever has um, intentions of being a champion in this league. Um, so with no further ado, I'm actually going Chase Hooper. I'm going Chase Hooper by submission. This line has crashed. Um, Chase Hooper opened as a plus 162 dog. Borshop was a minus uh, uh, 210 favorite. Um, Chase Hooper's 2-0 as a favorite. Um, Borshop is 2-1 as a uh, favorite. But yet, the money has poured in on Chase Hooper. Now, uh, Hooper is a plus 124 uh, dog. And uh, Borshop is now only a minus 158 favorite. I like Chase Hooper too. In the line, the line movement is suggesting that um, Chase Hooper is the side, not necessarily to win, but you know the value was on Chase Hooper at that time. So, um, yeah, I'll accept that. Next up, shit, my fault, y'all. It's uh, 9 a.m. in this bitch, and my eyes getting red in this hole. <laughs> Next up. We got the main card. We got Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Robeles Despagne. And this is another fight that we're going to make quick because it's pretty binary. Either Waldo Cortez Acosta melts um, Robeles Despagne for the first time in his career, or Robeles Despagne gets a big knockout again for the sixth time in his career. And that is what I'm predicting. I think Robeles Despagne is just. No joke. This dude, his reach is just unreal. Like, at an 87-inch reach, you know, there's just no way you can get to this dude. Dude's a freak. Sorry, guys. Keep yawning. It happens. But this dude, um, Robelis Despagne, he's a fucking freak of nature. And um, 
I won't be fading him until he shows me otherwise that he can be clipped or whatever. First or second round knockout, Robelis Despagne. Next up, we have Alex Caceres versus Sean Woodson. And this is a fight that I will be going to grab me a drink and I will be getting ready to go to war with these guys. Sean Woodson, um, 145er, 6'2", 78-inch reach. Alex Caceres, 35 years old, 5'10", 73-inch reach. So four and a half inch disadvantage in reach. You got the Snopper Woodson coming in, try to... Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You got the guy in Sean Woodson trying to come in and make a name for himself, get ranked up. Um, she's, he wants to be 14 in the world. Um, Alex Caceres, a guy who's coming off a close loss versus Giga Jakaze, I would say. Um, and um, he looked good. Um, I definitely think that um, this is a fight where Alex Caceres could win, but I just think that the reach disadvantage is going to be too much for Alex Caceres. Um, and then he had fought a guy named uh, Francisco Rivera Jr. And he just had his hands down like he was MVP, just chilling. And then boom! Left hand on the chin, right there on the chin. He got put down, grounded, pounded, and put out. That's what happens, man, when you're irresponsible. That's what happens when you're irresponsible with your hands and your placement of your hands. You get clipped with a big shot. And I think that Sean Wilson is going to be piecing this man up. There is a world where, like I said, Alex Caceres wins, man, because he is the more grittier. I wouldn't say, you know, he is a grittier fighter. You know, part of me does want to say Alex Caceres here because I think this line is a little bit off. But um, as you guys see, this is the one line that has not moved. It hasn't moved. You guys see, this line has not moved. And it's very interesting. That means that this line's favorite relatively close in um, how it should be. Oh, fuck. All right. So, yeah, I am going with Sean Wilson, but I wouldn't be surprised about anything that happens in that fight. Next up, we got Diego Fieda versus Mateus Rebecca. And I actually have Mateus Rebecca and this dude's in the lock of the card. He's the lock of the card. And I'm ready for that. That's going to be lit. That's going to be lit. Um, Rebecca, man, dude's good, man. The only, the only loss he got knocked out. He got cracked up and he got grounded it. Oh, shit. Yeah, man, I think Rebecca probably going to get this one easily. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and slide to the next one. You got Alonzo Minifield versus Carlos Allberg. And I will be hitting the bait to that one because that's going to be a banger. Man, crazy. Tyreek Lonzo Minifield, six foot. Carlos Alberg, six four. One inch reach advantage, on despite being four inches taller. Lonzo Minifield has some really long arms for his height, and I think that's what's been giving people issues. You got this long power puncher that you just can't get away from. You know, you just can't get him out of your face. This guy, Atomic Minifield, man, he, if, you, if you've been a backer of this guy, you've been making some fucking money. That's really it. That's really it. If you've been backing this dude, Alonzo Minifield, your pocket's full right now. And that's what's up. I'm happy for you. I, I have not been a guy backing Alonzo Minifield. 
only up until his last fight versus Dustin Jacoby. And I was like, yeah, I'm not fading this guy anymore, man. This dude, this dude, according according to like these odds, you will get plus money on Alonzo Minifield going forward because just like when I say split decisions, that the competition gets higher. When you keep knocking these people out, the competition still yet getting higher. And um, I think that is very interesting. Um, I think Atomic Alonzo Minifield, the man, Atomic Alonzo Minifield is going to knock him the fuck out. Oh, yeah. I think that's absolutely going to happen. Because, I mean, let's go. Let's get a recap of, of what I have. Rebecca, that's what I'm saying. I got Alonzo Minifield by KO. 55% confident. Like I said, Rebecca, he's my motherfucking lock of the card. And that should be an amazing one. Aldrich is my dog of the card. And then, yeah, we're going to slide over to the next one, man, where we have a fight that we didn't even know that we were going to have until like three weeks ago. <laughs> um, this is the fight that I studied lastly. And, um, you know, the tape is pretty fresh on my head right now. You got a guy, uh, Joaquin Dumas. You got a guy in Joaquin Dumas Buckley, uh, a guy who, um, you know, beat the corpse of Vicente Luque in his last one. I did predict against him in his last one, but um, yeah, I just didn't think that he was gonna be able to do that to uh, Luque. But then again, Luque is washed up. He's washed up. So I just felt like, yeah, man, that was a fight where we knew he was going to lose. I just feel like this is a fight where Nassau and Rossi Bayer is going to come in and start Buckley. Like, how many times have, yeah, like, Nassau has only been knocked out one time in his career. Um, he's 2-6 and six to decisions, and he's only been submitted one time in his career as well. So, yeah, man, I just think that this is a fight where, um, yeah, you know, Sultan Razabayev is going to knock Joaquin Buckley out. Um, that's just my honest opinion, TBH. You know, you do got a guy. You got a guy on Buckley who has 18 wins, 13 knockouts. You got a guy on Razabayev who has 12 knockouts in, in 34 fights and wins. One could say that he's going to get a submission, man. He's going to take. He's going to take this dude down and get him a submission because he just started knocking people out. <clears throat> you know, he was really submitting people. I don't know, man. I definitely think that, uh, yeah, man. I got Raza Bayev, believe it or not, and I think this fight's going to be very interesting. Next up, in which we have the main event of the evening. And that is Derek Lewis versus Rodrigo Nascimento. If we're going to go to the teletape, we got Derek Lewis, 39 years old. Rodrigo Nascimento, 31. 6'3 for Derek Lewis, 6'2 for Nascimento. One inch reach advantage for Nascimento, in which he might really need that, man. Because you got a guy in Nascimento, man. I don't know. I think this dude's not fucking playing, to be honest with you. Um, people forget how big Derek Lewis is, though, man. Dude, six three, like, dude's a behemoth. Um, I just feel like there's a world where Rodrigo Nascimento takes Derek Lewis down and beat him up and tap him out. But if Jailton Almeida couldn't do that to Derek Lewis, you're telling me that. Rodrigo Nascimento is going to do this to Derek Lewis? I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. I think this is a spot Derek Lewis gets back on track. And when I say track, Derek Lewis knockout. That's what fucking Derek Lewis does, bro. That's what he does. Um, Rodrigo Nascimento, he, he was knocked out by Chris Dacus. Um, I got Derek Lewis, bro. <clears throat> Derek Lewis is 10 and 3 as a favorite. I like that. 
Nascimento, I'm one and knows a dog. Okay. We'll see. I think that um I feel like Derek Lewis gonna knock him out in the second round. Yep. Derek Lewis second round knockout. That's one that's what sounded pretty good. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and just do a recap of the card real quick. So you got Alders decision, Kevin Jusset decision, Charles Johnson decision, Trey Waters TKO. I just feel like he's gonna um, Billy Golf's gonna get clipped coming in. Rebecca decision. I mean uh, Tabitha Ricci um decision. Terrence McKinney TKO or sub first round. Charles Hooper. I said Charles. Chase Hooper sub. Espanye TKO. <clears throat> Sean Woodson TKO. Rebecca de uh, decision or TKO. Alonzo Minifield KO. Nurse Sultan Razabayev TKO. Derek Lewis KO. I got this. I, I got KOs. I got finishes for the Eight fights, eight, eight, um, really nine out of the last ten fights. So, the first fights I, I'm predicting this, uh, decisions. The tab of the Ricci fight to go to decision, and then every other fight I'm predicting a stoppage. Um, I think we could get a stoppage out of the Charles Johnson fight, but like I said, man, I will be in attendance for that, man. I will have a fucking blast. Um, I think I will be doing a vlog video. So if you guys are interested in that. I think we might be vlogging up some knockouts for and just the whole experience. And I think we're going to do that. So that be that's going to be lit. Um, I will see you guys in the next one where we will have Lerone Murphy versus Edson Barbosa. Um, and that'd be a good one. So with no further ado, I'm out of here. Play that motherfucking man. Oh.